You too. Big H Trucking. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? The reason why he's doing that is we have a contract with these big carriers that they must be three, we gotta bring it there with three quarters of a, of a tank of fuel and there should be at least three quarters of a tank of fuel when we leave. I was under a half a tank. I've got 400 miles to run without, probably on side road, on all state roads until you get to I-20. I'm not taking that chance when it's 95 degrees out, less than a half a tank, that I run out of fuel. And there's no fuel in network I'd check anywhere within hundreds of miles. So I found the guy who was fueling. I said, brother, can you do me a favor? Can you hook me up? He's like, yeah, absolutely. So don't be afraid. It's a learning lesson. Don't be afraid. If you look at your reefer tank, when you go to pick it up at, the, at wherever you are, it's under a half, half or under. Go get the guy to put fuel in. Let me see how much we got. The guy hit a home run. He put a full tank in there. Oh, man. Awesome, awesome. He gave me a full tank. I'm blind, by the way. Big H trucking. Just a quick, short video. Picking up here in Texas. Going over to Dallas tonight. Got about a seven-hour trip. I got more flies in my truck than they're outside. And that's all part of being an over-the-road trucker. So anyway, I figure I'd share that with you. This is not my first time doing that. I've done it several places where when I went to go pick up a trailer, I'm all cockeyed. When I went to go pick up a trailer, there was half or under. Just as future reference, there is a contract with the big with the big houses because I've heard it at the Friday morning meeting that there's a contract that we have to bring our our trailers with at least three quarters and we have to leave it with at least three quarters of a tank a reefer fuel I wasn't leaving this place until I got that taken care of so I did so I don't want to harp on it and these flies are chewing at my ankles. But I just, it's a learning moment, all right? These are the things that you learn from a guy like me and others who have some time under our belt. Don't forget, when you check your reefer tank at one of the big places, at the meat, at the meat farms, at the chicken farms, Make sure you have at least three quarters. I mean, if it's a little under three quarters, it's not a big deal. But mine was under a half. I'm trying to get that fly at him off my ankle. So with that being said, Big H is out, man. Have a great day. Stay safe. Make great decisions. Thanks for the subscribers. I think congratulations, man. I think I hit a thousand subscribers. I haven't checked yet. Somebody told me. Maddie B, thanks for shouting it out. I think I just hit a thousand subscribers. So, I don't know what that means. I guess I can go live, but I got no fans to go live with. Um, but hey, listen, I'm just, I thank it, I appreciate it all. You know, I'm just doing, again, chronicling my journey as an over the road trucker, as an older gentleman. And uh, I just wanna share with you that it's never too late to start something new, that I went through it, I knew nothing about trucking. Nothing, nothing. All I can tell you is it took me two months to finally realize, to finally get used to how long this truck is. Between the trailer and the truck, it blew my mind that I could go around corners with this truck, with a trailer. So, if I could do it, you can do it. If you're sitting on a fence, you wanna make a good living, you want a good training program, really good training program, you know, Prime is, is, a, is, a, is a very good potential for you to go. I'm not saying that there are, you know, the best of the best but they're the best for me it was my fit um you know you hear stories come on buddy come on you hear stories war stories yeah maybe that's all true i got lucky um with a, with a trainer that had 16 years he taught me a lot was it perfect no we butted heads several several times but that's what happens when you live with somebody in a very small cubicle all right so but you work things out that's what that's why god gave us a mouth and a tongue to communicate 
And if it doesn't work out after you communicate, you can always, you know, reach out to your fleet manager and say, yo, this ain't working out, man. Get me somebody else. You want to make sure when you get into training that you get somebody that's going to train you, not just to hold the steering wheel and make them miles so they can get more money. No, no, no. If they're not teaching you from day one how to do stuff, you, 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 you corner them, you question them, and then you, uh, if nothing improves, then you absolutely, 100%, One hundred percent. You go and uh, find somebody else because there's people out there, good trainers everywhere. You go out and you talk to your fleet manager about what's going on, and they will change it for you. All right. This company is founded and based on new people coming in, fresh people. So don't think that you're going to not be taken care of. They want you to learn. They need you to get in a truck and push freight, carry freight. So just as a little word of caution, I mean, not a word of caution, but a little word of maybe prompting you to come on over to Prime if you're an older person and the job market stuff right now and you're looking for a decent living and you're willing to stay out on the road for over a month, I would say six weeks is bare bones minimum as a solo. If you if you can do that, then you could make yourself a really good living. All right, my first year after all said and done, I did seventy two thousand. That's after paying taxes. Everybody, it's not a bad first year gig, and it gets better as as time goes on. You get more experience. You can become more efficient. You can start hitting some home runs. So with that being said, Big H is out.